Hi, welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. If you're watching TV coverage of the Iraq crisis, you might feel inclined to check the calendar on your wall to see if it's really 2014 and not 2003. Hawkish lawmakers like John McCain and Lindsey Graham are everywhere, as are Bush administration officials like Paul Wolfowitz and pro-war pundits like Bill Kristol and Laura Ingram. Last Sunday's chat shows showed a remarkable tilt in favor of those who got Iraq wrong the first time around, but who are, for reasons clear only to the producers of these shows, still considered experts on the disaster they either orchestrated or cheered on from the sidelines. Some of these experiences have been contentious. CNN's Aaron Burnett asked a few tough questions to former Bush official Paul Bremer, for example, but that was definitely more the exception than the rule. A New York Times profile of former Bush Ambassador John Bolton noted that he is among the cavalcade of neoconservatives newly emerged on cable television and in hawkish policy seminars to say, we told you so, on Iraq. Now in a different media, one that had any interest at all in accountability, this cavalcade would not even make it into the TV studios. But instead we're seeing the opposite, being wrong about Iraq actually makes you more of an expert. Much of the coverage of this new crisis in Iraq has revealed one thing very clearly. U.S. reporters see Iraq as a place where Americans suffered and sacrificed. On ABC World News, Martha Raddatz explained that the city of Mosul was once a focal point of America's fight to bring peace and stability to this country. Iraqis might have other ways to describe the U.S. invasion and occupation than bringing peace, though. Her report, like many others, was keenly focused on tallying the price Americans have paid. So 11 years after the U.S. invaded Iraq, lost nearly 4,500 American lives, and spent over $730 billion, Iraq is in crisis. After all the American lives there were lost, all those who came home grievously wounded, Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, has now fallen into the control of an al-Qaeda offshoot. It's beyond perverse to frame the ongoing catastrophe in Iraq through the prism of U.S. suffering, as if Iraqi lives are of secondary concern. You could also hear reporters framing possible U.S. military action in a somewhat peculiar way. There is a real possibility that the U.S. could somehow be drawn back into a war in Iraq. Extremists taking control of city after city. What danger do they pose to the United States? And could America be drawn back into war? But as insurgents overran those cities and advanced toward Baghdad, the alarm was sudden and real. Was the U.S. going to be drawn into a third Iraq war? The world's lone military superpower is not being drawn into a war that it started. This is very revealing language on the part of the media, though, since it treats U.S. war making as a reaction and not as a series of actions. And finally, NBC Universal is opening a new feature at its Orlando theme park. Lucky for them, they have a TV network, including a news division, that will produce infomercials about this for the parent company. The Today Show broadcast from Orlando in order to celebrate the opening of a new Harry Potter attraction at Universal. And they presented a long segment on how to enjoy a family vacation at Universal's theme park. NBC and Universal are, as one Media Bistro article put it, corporate cousins. This wasn't the only curious information that came out of NBC News this week. It was reported that the network paid Chelsea Clinton more than $600,000 a year for a few brief appearances as an NBC correspondent. Media conflicts of interest, access pandering, and generally elite clubbishness run so rampant these days that expressing concerns over them can almost seem quaint. Well, call us quaint then. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.